Good morning guys and we're gonna start things off a little bit different today. I'm gonna kind of give it the same point of view as JR does. And we're in his car right now. We're letting this thing warm up. Apparently we got safe driving coming. This Dane radar tractor. So his car is back. We do plan on going bigger than ever on it. And this is kind of the route I was pushing them to do in the first place. You know, fortunately, we are now able to do it on his car. So pretty excited what we do have to come with it. And right now, for those of you just tuning in that don't know what's on this car, we did a stage four BBR short block about, I want to say it was about six to eight months ago. I have to take a look back. But I'll put that video right over here where JR came over and we went ahead and got that knocked out for him. He did end up going an FP black on this car. It has a three inch turbo inlet on a stock intake manifold, which you guys know I really despise of. And this is the last car that I did one on with a stock intake manifold and it, I just say there's no more. So we are getting rid of that today. There's gonna be no more of that. So that gives you a hint of what we got coming. And I really hope that this camera is not being blurry today because if it is, I'm sure you guys are gonna roast me down below. So I'm trying to figure it out. Not the best when it comes to uh, electronics anymore. So uh, I'll try to get it figured out. I'm gonna look at this clip before I continue on. That way I know that we're not being all blurry for you guys. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully uh, it's back in order the way it should. I do notice there's a couple things that still are not working on it. But uh, after Texas, like I said, we are grateful enough to have many people hold the camera and go through and get the footage for you guys. Somewhere along the way, some setting got changed though so whether what that is i'm not sure uh chandler did go ahead and try to fix it for us i'm gonna see like i said i'm gonna see if we're blurry if we are then it looks like we're gonna have some iphone footage until i get this figured out so i'm gonna let this thing warm up i'm gonna look over this clip make sure we're good to go for today's recording for you guys and we're gonna go out i'm gonna go on the back road show you guys the car go around it do a walk through and i'll tip into it just a little bit right before we get rid of this setup so you guys can see uh, this car did make uh, 450 on Steve's dyno, on the Mustang dyno. Like you guys have seen in the past, that is a little bit low reading. Uh, that was on an E60 content because unfortunately he just didn't have enough content that day of the fuel that he brought. So not a big deal. Uh, 450 on that dyno, if I had to give you a number of what it would be, I would say it'd probably be right around 525 dyno jet is what we've proven that to end up being. So right around 500 wheel on this setup with the FP Black on E85. I believe the car, it doesn't have the access port there right now, but I believe the car is on pump gas when he brought it over to me. So on pump gas, I think the car made 380. So I'll go ahead and pop the access port in and see what we are on fuel. He did bring plenty of fuel in the background for us so that we can do an E85 tune. Obviously 92, I can just go down to the street and fill it up. E85, not that lucky. But things might be changing. There is news about possibly a pump going in our town, which, now it'd be big news since we haven't been able to have that for, I think it's been about five years now. So if we do have that, I think that it's gonna be a growing change and you guys will see a lot more E85 cars. You know, everything I own, including my diesel truck, will probably go on E85 as I've been saying. Obviously, I don't think the truck will run very well on it, but you guys get my point. So let the scene warm up, look at this clip. Let's go for a drive and look at the car. All right guys, I took a look at it and I did notice it was a little bit uh, blurry still, so really hoping that it's not going to stay that way i did go through some settings on the camera and i think that that fixed it um, we're back in jr's car now obviously as you can tell and we're taking a look our ethanol content level here here's the real test thing. 17 is what we're at so we're on pump gas pump gas power so let's go ahead and drive it around and we're going to go for a quick trip out to mexico i'm going to show you guys i'm just going to tip into it a little bit show you what the 380 wheel is like on the fp black and this does have uh, built heads in it as well, it has 272 cams. So keep that in mind that the power curve may be a little bit later than what a stock cam would be. So let's go ahead, get out there and do it. If you guys are wondering why he's not here is because he had to work unfortunately so 
that is why he's not here definitely missing you buddy but we're taking the little drive out here this ain't the motor went in the car at around 18,000 miles if I recall correctly JR can correct me if that's right or not but I'm pretty sure it was right around 18,000 miles we are now at 24,000 miles on the car so that leads us to be where we're right around the 6,000 mile mark on the motor we're almost at 25 so right six to seven thousand miles what this motor has on it since we put it in and sounds great i don't hear anything out of the uh, normal noises you know obviously you have some forged piston noise in the morning when it's cold but other than that this thing does sound just like it did the day we put this thing together we got great oil pressure on it it's nice to have an oil pressure gauge there and we have oil temp as well so as i'm letting this thing warm up i'm driving out here let's go over the car a little more um, it does have a tome exhaust on it that sounds really good it is about to get quite a bit louder with the new larger turbo that we're putting on it so i'm gonna go out here and park off to the side and i'm gonna open up the hood go over this car real quick with you guys like i said some of you may not know this car so i'd rather just go over it double check and then that way you guys can see what we are going to be changing today and going through the car so as we venture out here a little quick third gear pull let it come down in the rpms for you guys that way you get a real taste of what an fp block is like for like time and forward intake manifold different turbo inlet as we have proven on uh, Stefan's build as you guys may have seen uh, that one we were able to make closer to what this car made on ethanol on pump gas so it had proved that it had worked really well so I'm just pulling off to the side here nice and slow nice and safe because you know JR he has a little bit of hot boy stuff as I call it so let's go ahead take a look at this car do a quick walk around with you guys and see what we're gonna be changing today so as we're out here, first thing is, honestly, JR, you know I give you crap about the hot boy stuff, but this thing does look really clean, really tastefully modded, and I think it looks really good. So drop down below what you guys think. You think that this is very clean, tasteful, tastefully modded, and not too hot boy. I think it's a good taste of all around as far as being able to use the car for what he likes, which is track days, and to be able to have it look good. I mean, this does look good. You know, obviously when you're driving it, you're not having a bunch of rubbing going on, but this thing looks really good. Now, I know you guys want to see the most important part, and let's see underneath the hood. I don't know if it's picking up too much of the engine noise, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the engine so that way you guys can make sure to hear me. So, let's turn this thing off. And, now we do have hood pins because it has a carbon fiber hood, so these are actually pretty nice. You can push there, and they pop up like that. Same thing here pop up like that this one if i remember right see you have to push down on it a little bit i remember jr i remember old girl she's in uh, good hands here so here we are guys so here we are what do we have we have a bbr 650 stage 4 rated short block in here and we have one of our stage 2 cylinder head packages on this car what that means in the cylinder heads they still are a stock port but we have a set of BC 272 cams and BC valve train in the cylinder head. So we can get the extra RPM that we did need for that FP black. Now we're going to further need RPM with the setup that we're going to. And that's right, guys, you got, probably have guessed it. This whole setup is all going away as far as turbo kit wise. Motor is still going to be staying. Uh, we are going to be putting an ETS rotated turbo kit on this car. As many of you probably have seen on his channel, he bought that from Chandler. So unfortunately chandler did part out his series gray for reasons why we'll never know but that thing ran perfect and he pulled it apart on us so this car is going to get the ets rotated turbo kit on it we are going to be putting a 6466 with a 105 housing on it, so we got plenty of room to grow on this setup uh, this particular motor setup we are going to be pushing it because obviously one you guys know it's a stage four so it's rated for 650 two we have standard 11 millimeter head studs in it air p2000s and we have a set of je pro seals in here so we already know the limits of that gasket setup and head studs and jr knows 
that we're going to be pushing it. So he's kind of regretting a little bit in this time frame of doing that back in the day when I was kind of pushing him. Now, I'm really glad that I did push him to get the cylinder heads on this thing, but he's kind of regretting it a little bit. And that's how it always goes, guys. I want to make sure that you guys have room to grow and you're not spending money multiple different times because let's face it, once you feel more power, you're always going to want more power anyways. So once you go into it, it's just nice to have like this. We have built cylinder heads. Yeah, we have a little bit lacking of a head gasket on the car, but you know what? In the meantime, he can at least enjoy more RPMs in the car and we can be conscious of the head gasket in it, keep the cylinder pressure down and get this thing to be dependable for him. So he knows that we may have to upgrade two half inch head studs and a better gasket later on. But enough talk of what's going on from the future. Right now, like I told you guys, we have an FP Black on here. We have an external wastegate from Grimspeed that is down underneath there. That's probably going to be difficult to see. We have a Perrin front mount intercooler kit, Perrin AOS kit on the car. And I do believe, if I remember right, this is also Perrin for his intake as well. We have an IAG fuel rail, as you guys will see, right down in there. So we got the IAG fuel line and rail kit. And we have a set of ID 1300s on there with a flex fuel kit from Cobb right now. Now we are gonna be changing the 1300s. That's obviously not gonna be enough injector for where we're going. He does have a set of the FIC 2150s for this thing. So we're not gonna have any fuel issues anymore. So, but that gives you a quick overview of what's going on with the car and what it currently has and the power it's made. For those of you, I know this is a pretty relatable power and a lot of you have looked at the FP Black. Now we've made upwards of 650 wheel on the FP Black. It's a great turbo, but I think for what he wants to do, that a rotated turbo kit will outperform this in every way possible. So we already have proved that and knowing that, and especially you know when you have the stock intake manifold and you have this Dane three inch turbo inlet, and I don't know if this is gonna pick it up, but it is severely squeezed into there. So usually with a setup like this, I would make you go to an AMS intake manifold. As you guys have seen on Billy's car, that build is coming up onto the channel soon. And you can see a proper way of setting up a three inch turbo inlet on a stock turbo location. So keep in the loop, keep watching, because that's about to come on. And we aren't just gonna get away from all the stock location turbos, but there is some places where they work well and some they don't. And unfortunately, if the stock intake manifold and a three inch inlet, they just don't. So. Gives you an overview of the car, guys. Give you a nice tip in. I think it's now time to pull this thing apart. Hopefully you guys can still hear me because I have my mic going the other way to try to further help you guys. I'm trying to put a little bit more time into this and make the content better for you guys. I know you are pretty frustrated of having a blurry camera, so hopefully it's not being blurry right now. It's kind of hard for me to tell until I go and edit it. So I'm gonna get back in the car. We're gonna get back and get back to work and start making this thing fast. Pedal to the ground, pedal to the ground, pedal to the ground Living 